Jag skulle först vilja fråga dig hur du skulle definiera begreppet regi, begreppet filmregi. Kan man definiera det i några termer? Filmregi. Ja, det var någon regissör som sa att en filmregissör är en person som aldrig hinner tänka för bara problem. Det tycker jag nog är den närmaste definitionen man kan göra. Hello everyone and welcome to this video dedicated to Swedish director Ingmar Bergman. Now you might be wondering, who is this guy? Am I right? Don't worry. I was in your shoes a couple of years ago until I watched one of his films and then I was forever transfixed and transformed by his work. Now it's, it's not just the cinematography that was great or the actor's performance, but it was actually the stories, the stories that spoke and they still to this day speak volumes. And this is one of the reasons why Bergman is considered to be one of the greatest directors of all time. It was because his appeal to the audience through a sincere and pure depiction of touchy subjects, such as marital problems, doubt in the metaphysical, sexual abuse, child abuse, and others. You know, there's a saying out there in the world that art imitates life. Well, this is the secret to Bergman's greatness, his life. Ingmar Bergman was born on July 14, 1908, in Uppsala, a city north of Stockholm, in a high middle-class religious family. His parents were Erik and Karin Bergman. His father, according to Bergman's autobiography, was a devoted man to his service. His reputation as a fine preacher and a caring man of the flock appointed him as the personal chaplain of Queen Sophia at the Royal Swedish Court. Bergman recounts his father when he served as a Lutheran parish priest in Stockholm, both with a tone of disgust and appreciation. He writes that his father cared for his parishioners with an immense sense of care and love. However, this was all an act. Quote, father undoubtedly possessed considerable acting ability, but off stage he was nervous, irritable and depressive. He was always fretting and giving to violent outbursts of temper, picking heavily on minor matters." End quote. Unfortunately, Berman's mother was not any different than his father. He recounts his interaction with her as being somewhat distant, unable to connect with her not even in later years. Thus Bergman, being abandoned emotionally by his parents, sought refuge in the medium through which later he would be able to express his childhood dramas to movies. Films slowly became at first a mode of escape and later they developed into therapy for Bergman. In his autobiography he recounts of the fact that growing up with his parents was very hard since they, especially his father, used to inflict horrendous punishments upon Bergman and his other two siblings, Dog and Margareta. Bergman writes that, quote, punishments were something self-evident, never questioned, and quote, ranging from simple to, quote, extremely sophisticated, refined through generations, end quote. There was like a strafning, you De kastade in mig i garderoben och stängde dörren och det blev tyst och mörkt och jag blev vansinnigt rädd och jag dunkade och sparkade. 
Därför de hade nämligen sagt mig att det bodde en liten människa just i den där garderoben. Och han kunde knaga bort tårna på elaka barn. Och när jag slutade dunka så hörde jag plötsligt någonting prassla borta i ett hörn. Och jag förstod att nu var min stund kommen. Och i någon slags tyst panik så började jag klättra på skokartonger och hyllor. Och jag försökte häva mig upp i händerna. Och kläder rasade omkring mig. Och jag tappade taget och jag föll. Och jag slog vilt omkring mig hela tiden för att värja mig mot den där lilla varelsen. Och hela tiden så köt jag av fasa och bad om förlåtelse. Och till slut så öppnades dörren och jag fick stiga ut i dagsljuset. Och far sa, jag hör av mor att du ber om förlåtelse. Och jag sa, ja, jag ber så hemskt mycket om förlåtelse. Jag gör i ordning på soffan då, sa han. Jag gick fram till den gröna soffan i fars rum och plockade ihop ett par kuddar och lade dem ovanpå varandra. Och så gick jag och hämtade rottingen och knäppte ner byxorna och la mig framstupa över kuddarna där. Och så sa far, ja, hur många slag har du förtjänat? Och jag sa, så många slag som möjligt. Och så slog han mig med rottingen då. Ganska hårt. Men inte olyckligt. När bestraffningen var över så vände jag mig till mor. Och frågade. Kan mor förlåta mig nu? Och hon grät. Och sa visst förlåter jag dig. Cinema. Film. Was to me an obsession. I don't know. I saw my first picture when I was six years old, and then I was completely lost. The escape came when, at the age of nine, he received his first projector, which meant freedom from his troublesome and quarrelsome life. While this acquisition assured him of a different universe, his grandmother gave him the protection and love he long sought from his parents. Within his autobiography, Bergman recounts with such longing about his long summers at his grandmother's house and town, far away from his parents and his annoying siblings. He was in his world, a world in which love, comfort, and understanding cohabitated like never before. Quote, She loved going to the movies. We read out loud to each other. We invented stories. End quote. And mother. Bergman's passion for films grew to heights from which he would never descend. And what I wanted most of all, that was to have an, my, a pro projector of my own, you know, a small one, just, just a toy, children's toy, not very expensive. And uh, uh, one Christmas, before Christmas, the Christmas presents were under the staircase in a, in a small, uh, what's, what's that? Pile. Yes, yes, Peep. yes. And I saw there was a brown uh, package and I knew this is the, the this is the um, uh, projector. And I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, and then Christmas came and my brother got the projector. And I was so disappointed, so I, I think I'm, I'm dying. I, I can't survive this. But uh, we had both, my brother and I, tin soldiers. So uh, I bought, on the day after Christmas Eve, I bought uh, from my brother uh, the projector and gave him my whole army. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> that was a, that that was that was the beginning of my uh, b b did you my think, life as a, did you think as a filmmaker. <laughs> Bergman's films acted as a remedy to his poisoned early life. In a way, they freed him of burdens which only he could understand. Films such as The Seventh Seal, Wild Strawberries, The Magician, Through a Glass Darkly, Winter Light, 
and Fanning Alexander allowed Bergman to unload off his shoulders all the unpleasant memories about his father and his faith in which, according to Bergman, was forced into. All of those aforementioned films depict the struggles of faith, belief in the unseen and the outmost silence of God through their characters who are normal people. This is what makes Bergman's world of cinema unique. The use of normal people going through normal problems that each one of us might encounter or have encountered in the past. It is Bergman's ability to capture despair and desolation within one's troubling soul. I will build myself up as much as I can. But my heart is tomb. And tomb is a spiral wind on my own face. I see myself. And grips of wider will and shrek. Genom min likgiltighet för människorna har jag ställts utanför deras gemenskap. Numera lever jag i en spökvärld, innesluten i mina drömmar och fantasier. Vad så rått, det vill du inte dö? Jo, jag vill. Vad väntar du på? Jag vill ha vetskap. Du vill ha garanti? Kalla det vad du vill. Är det så grymt otänkbart att fatta Gud med sina sinnen? Varför ska han gömma sig i en dunstkrets av halvuttalade löften och osedda under? Hur ska vi kunna tro på de troende när vi inte tror på själva? Vad blir det av oss som vill tro men inte kan? Och vad blir det av dem som varken vill eller kan tro? Varför kan jag inte döda Gud inom mig? Varför lever han vidare inom mig? På ett smärtsamt och förutbyggande sätt. Trots att jag förbannar honom. Och vill bara ut honom ur mitt hjärta. Varför är han trots allt en jäckande verklighet. Som jag inte kan bli kvitt. Hör du mig? Jag hör dig. A similar and more powerful scene can be seen in a few years later. In Winterlight. Where a Lutheran pastor struggles with his faith. Ja du vet vad man tänker man om. Jag visste ingenting om ondsk eller grymhet. Jag var som ett litet barn när jag prästvigdes. Så hände allting med en gång. Jag blev tillfälligtvis sjömansprest i Lissabon. Det var under spanska inbördeskriget. Jag vägrade att se och förstå. Jag vägrade att acceptera verkligheten. Jag och min Gud levde i en värld, en särskilt ordnad värld där allting stämde. Du måste förstå. Jag är ingen bra präst. Jag har trott på en orimlig, alldeles privat, faderlig Gud som visserligen älskade människorna, men mig mest av alla. Förstår du Jonas mitt fruktansvärda misstag? Förstår du vilken dålig präst det måste bli av en sån instängd, bortskämd, ängslig stackare? Kan du föreställa mina böner till en ekogud som har välvilliga svar och betryggande välsignelser? Varje gång jag konfronterade Gud med den verklighet jag såg blev han ful, vederstyglig, en spindelgud, ett monster. Det var ju därför som jag skyddade honom för liv och ljus. Jag tryckte honom in till mig i mörkret och ensamheten. Den enda som fick se min Gud var min hustru. In other words, Bergman tries to connect with those struggling with their faith and death by assuring them that there are others who question such subjects. And especially I was very afraid of death. And then I, I thought I didn't think. I just made it. I wrote this uh, seventh seal. And uh, the seventh seal is about death the whole time. Death turns death, up right at the very beginning death, of the film. Yeah. Death is uh, present the whole time in this picture. And everybody in this picture reacts differently to death. 
And after that uh, picture, of course, I still think very much about death, death and, and um, so, but after that picture, it's not an obsession anymore. I, I, uh, I just can live with it. So that uh, the picture was a good medicine, if you, if what, that was what you meant. Yes. But faith and death were not the only things on Bergman's mind. Women were as well, and often they took precedence, both in his private life and film life. In films such as All These Women, Cries and Whispers, Persona, and Autumn Sonata, Bergman elevated the feminine nature and situated it on a pedestal, worshipping it. Since his relationship with his mother has been broken at a very early age, he became an insecure person later on in his love life. His marital relationships were always insecure and fragile, always leaving them or running away from them once he found someone else. A perfect theme, which is reflected in Autumn Sonata and Scenes from a Marriage, in which both protagonists undergo internal turmoil with themselves over their family status. However, they express their turmoil with elegance, yet seriousness, like in Scenes from a Marriage, or through hateful rebuke ultimately leading to forgiveness in Autumn Sonata. At the end of Autumn Sonata, the mother's guilt for neglecting her daughter from an early age to, in order to follow her musical career led to her daughter's hatred for her. However, the daughter's guilt for rebuking her own mother makes her forgive her mother's past in order to finally connect with the person she long sought to know and love. Tjena mamma, jag har förstått att jag gjorde fel mot dig. Jag mätte dig med krav istället för med ömhet. Jag plågade dig med ett gammalt surna tak som inte längre är verkligt. Jag gjorde fel hela tiden och jag vill be dig att förlåta mig. Jag vet inte vad som det här brevet når fram till dig. Jag vet inte ens om du kommer att läsa det. Kanske aldrig redan för sent. Men jag hoppas trots allt att min upptäckt inte ska vara förgeves. Det finns ändå en slags nåd. Jag menar den oerhörda möjlighet att få ta hand om varandra. Att få hjälpa varandra. Att få visa ömhet. Jag tänker aldrig mer låta dig försvinna ur mitt liv. Tänker envisas. Jag ger mig inte. Även om det är för sent. Jag tror inte att det är för sent. Det får inte vara för sent. In contrast with scenes from a marriage where the two spouses guilt is non-existent, mutual hatred and disgust in regards of one another drives them more and more apart. Tror du att jag är kvar då när du kommer tillbaka? Ja, det skiter jag i. Vet du hur länge jag har gått med det här? Kan du säga det? Ja, inte med det här med Paula, men... Det här med att jag skulle bryta upp från dig och barnen och hemmet. Kan du säga det? Säg det inte. I fyra år har jag velat bli av med dig. Inte med dig. Nej, du har det. Det är bara prat. In Autumn Sonata, Cries and Whispers and Persona, Bergman tries at his best to uncover what women truly are in the end. Sensible, erotic, loving, but also spiteful. One of the reasons why he portrays his feminine characters, however, not only on the silver screen like this, is because for Bergman, quote, Film work is a powerfully erotic business. The proximity of actors is without reservations. The mutual exposure is total. The intimacy, devotion, dependency, love, confidence, and credibility in front of the camera's magical eye become a warm, possibly illusory security. The strain, the easing of tension, the mutual drawing of breath, the moment of triumph, followed by the anticlimax. The atmosphere is irresistibly charged with sexuality. 
end quote. Congratulations, you've made it back from the world of Bergman. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Before I let you go, I'd like for us to take a minute or two in reflecting who Bergman is. It doesn't matter if you knew who he was before this video or you were introduced to him through this video. What matters is what impression did he leave on you? I can safely say that the first time when I watched his film, The Seventh Seal, I was shocked and yet I was also terrified because of his arguments about death and his dialogues with death. But as time has progressed and as the years gone by, I've gone to cope with that and I've, I've gone past that in a certain way, just like Bergman has done so by making the movie. It was sort of a medicine, a remedy to his fear. And that's what this movie was for me as well. But it's not just one film or two or three films. It is the way he appeals to the audience through his way of storytelling, which is very simple and it's very humane. But at the end of it all, of all this simple and humane story, there lies a very deep, deep, meaningful root, which in a certain way, whether we like it or not, it appeals to us. That is what I call greatness within a director. A director which takes the most simplest story and transforms it into an air-gasping, shocking, and reflective film. Well, before I go, here's Bergman one last time. <laughs> it's all over. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, God heavens. <laughs>